With the release of OpenAI's chat GPT Pulse, there is further evidence that LLM providers such as OpenAI are hitting a data wall. Let's talk about it. Welcome to Dave is Not AI. I'm Dave, an AI expert and AI skeptic. Let's get started. So the rapid evolution of large language models appears to be slowing and we're seeing providers turn to feature-based innovations to maintain momentum. The recent release of OpenAI's chat GPT Pulse is a key example of that, offering a suite of features that for many distract from the core issue LLMs are hitting a data wall, limiting fundamental improvements. So what's going on now? We've been talking about this for a while. LLMs learn from data, data that's generated by you and me out on the open internet. And so they're able to go through books and articles and videos and you know all kinds of different media to train themselves in to be smart with everything. And that's why they're so useful. Uh, we use LLMs all the time. And obviously ChatGPT was a huge, huge advancement in, uh, in AI that uh, people followed fairly quickly. But what's going on right now is that the LLM providers, large language model providers like OpenAI, but there's others out there, Google, Meta, you know, uh, inner, inner LLM provider, a big tech provider there, are hitting a data wall. They run out of data to train themselves upon. So as new versions of LLMs are coming out and hitting the streets, such as Jet, Chat GPT-5, which we looked at, we're not very impressed with, are starting to show limitations. In other words, they're not doing the incremental improvements that they did in the past with the different releases. So in hitting a wall, what the LLM providers, including OpenAI, are doing, they're starting to use gimmicks. They're starting to put features and functions into their products that distract from the fact that the LLMs aren't getting incrementally better. And so that's going to be an issue. So Pulse is a feature suite that transforms ChatGPT into a dynamic real-time intelligence dashboard. And so what's different about it, it allows users to monitor specific topics, keywords, and data streams continuously providing live updates and automated summaries as information evolves. Some of the key features include the ability to track emerging trends, visualize data through auto-generated charts and graphs, and receive alerts on significant changes, all customized for your particular needs. GPT Pulse essentially creates a persistent AI-powered command center, which turns conventional interfaces into proactive tools for staying on top of rapidly changing information without needing to repeated, repeatedly prompt the model for updates. So the rise of feature gimmicks providers are now competing on features rather than core model intelligence. So less suggesting the low hanging fruit of performance gains are gone. So these new capabilities are often flashy, but serve as niche use cases, masking a lack of progress in the underlying models, reasoning and reliability. I can't stress that enough. So in other words, as they're iterating through these LLMs and new LLMs are hitting the street, they're not getting any better. They're still hallucinating. They're still providing inaccurate information in some instances. And the reason is, is basically they're only going to be as good as the data that they're trained upon. And what happened out there is that the learn, they learned from every piece of the internet they could find, all the articles and things like that. And while we're organically creating data now and will be in perpetuity, they've kind of hit a data wall in the fact that data is not getting created fast enough for them to drive incremental value and value in the LLMs are improving the models for use within the industry right now. So this data wall is real. Uh, they're running out of features. They're running out of things that they can do to improve the models. And everybody is figuring that out right now. And so they're turning to gimmicks to, in essence, hide the fact that they're not improving their LLMs. So hitting the great data wall of LLM providers, including OpenAI, have largely exhausted the vast repository of high quality public data available on the internet. The scarcity of new information means models are being trained on recycled or lower quality data leading to diminished returns on performance. So they're just not coming up with the answers, the improving answers that we need. And for, so in fact, if you take a look at this graph here, this is exactly what's going on. So as you can see, the LLMs have fallen off a cliff in terms of the value they're able to add to the business because they're incrementally not getting better, but they're trying to, in essence, mask that with the rise of gimmicks that'll hopefully, hopefully distract us from understanding that these models are not incrementally improving. 
So the illusion of progress updates like GPT Pulse create an illusion of rapid advancement, but they don't solve the core problems of model stagnation. So users would benefit more from a model that is fundamentally more accurate and less prone to hallucinations than one with more peripheral tools. And I think I can't state that enough. So I just want the models to get better. I, I need LLMs for one particular purpose. I'm going to ask questions either via the API or via the prompt. And I want accurate information to come back. I don't want to have to second guess the information to you know, figure out whether it's been hallucinated or not, whether it's accurate or not. And so if these LLMs are going to have any value in the business space, they need to focus on providing that capability. And that's where they kind of run into a huge wall. So misaligned user needs ultimately is something else to consider. So the focus on adding complex features overlooks the primary need of most users, which is more capable and trustworthy core LLM features and capabilities. While some power users may benefit, the average person is left with the same foundational model limitations now wrapped in a more complex interface. And also they're paying more money for this. So, um, and when I, at the time of, um, that I'm doing this video, uh, OpenAI, in terms of charging for ChatGPT Pro, I think it's $200 a month. And so that's a lot of money for small business people or people who are using this for their own individual purposes. And so if they're charging us that much money, they want to, in essence, have the illusion of providing value for the money. And I think that's why we're seeing the rise of gimmicks right now. But they're not going to change unless the users are going to ask them to change. So we should be feeding back to all of the LLM providers that the gimmicks are cool, but they're not really solving the problem. They're making your tool more complex and therefore less valuable. You know, tell us how you can make your LLM better and when it's going to be better. So the desperate search for what's next is really what's driving this. So the data shortage is forcing providers into a costly and complex race for proprietary data sets and synthetic data generation. This shift introduces significant risk around data privacy, bias, and the ultimate cost of using these models, which will inevitably be, which will be passed on to the consumer. As I mentioned earlier, the prices are getting higher and you're going to pay for this innovation. So whether you use Pulse or not, if you're giving money to ChatGPT for their service one way or the other, consuming it through a product or consuming it directly from OpenAI, um, they're going to increase the cost of this stuff because they have to. Uh, they're a business and they have to do quarter on quarter growth. Uh, in essence, that's what businesses do. They operate in their own self-interest. So they're not necessarily going to focus on the things that they should be focused on for providing value to you. They're going to be focused on the things that they want to be focused on for increasing their revenue. And I think that's what's going on right now. And again, the only way they're going to change is for us to give them the feedback that we don't want this. Uh, we want you to work on making the LLMs much better and dealing with the current data sets that you have access to now and reduce the hallucinations, increase the accuracy and make them more valuable to the businesses, the systems and the individuals who use them. So in essence, the industry is entering a new phase where the appearance of innovation is prioritized over genuine advancement. I can't stress that enough. That's what's going on right now. As long as the data wall remains, we can expect to see more gimmicky feature releases designed to keep users engaged while the race to find new data sources happens behind the scenes. So they're spending money, I think, where they shouldn't be spending money. They're spending money on building feature sets around the core LLM and not necessarily spending money on improving the LLM as a, as a product. And maybe they truly hit a wall where if they don't have the data that's going to be provided for a tr as a training asset for these LLMs, they can improve it. Uh, they cannot. So it would be nice if they told us that, you know, versus, you know, pushing out these different features and functions that are around the core use case of what the LLMs are for. And in short, they're kind of ripping people off, I think. And if you're looking at this as the same way I'm looking at this, uh, this is something that's got to change or else the value of generative AI in terms of how LLMs are being provided to the general public um, is not going to be there.
So anyway, let me know what you think about this, whether you think it's important or not. You like the new features that are coming out from OpenAI and the other LLM providers, or you'd rather them focus on the innovation around improving the LLMs. So don't forget to like and subscribe and check out my other videos on this channel. Also check out my InfoWorld Cloud Computing blog, my 100 plus LinkedIn learning courses, and of course, my generative AI architecture course out on Go Cloud Careers. And finally, my latest book, An Insider's Guide to Cloud Computing. So until next week, stay very, very safe. Later.